Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. I'm pretty excited today because a lot of my viewers have multiple small power stations and I've always gotten the question, can you hook them up together to make them last longer? So let's just jump into some testing and have some fun. Okay, so let's jump into our first example of having one power station running a, you know, a laptop or something like that. So let's say this Energizer 320 has an estimated 300 watt hours of capacity. This laptop is plugged in through USB-C and it pulls around 60 watts to around 10 watts depending on the load of the laptop. So off this small power station, you'll get around five to 10 hours of runtime. So say you wanted to get through your entire workday, that might not be possible with this small power station. So you can actually take another power station you already have, the Blue Eddy EB70, and it supports 100 watts output USB-C. So we can actually turn that on, and then we come in here, we take our USB-C cable and plug it into the energizer. So now what we can do is we can take the power from this power station, dump it into this power station, and then this one will run our load. So now we have a combined uh, power of 1,000 watt hours versus just 300. So if you already have the two power stations laying around, you can definitely hook them together and get more capacity. And it's really nice when you have a USB-C charging setup like this, because this one puts out 100 watts, this one accepts 100 watts, and then the laptop charges off the 60 watt output. Okay, so just for fun, I wanted to make the chain a little bit longer. So if you have power stations that accept uh, dual input and output, so both the Energizer and the GoLabs both accept 100 watts input and put out power, so I have my EB70 plugged into my Go Labs, and my Go Labs plugged into the Energizer, and the Energizer plugged into the laptop. So you can see they're all daisy chained together. And so this one would probably empty first, and then all that power would be dumped into this one. All this would be empty, and then that would dump into this one, and then it would be uh, eventually empty. So this setup here works really well for you know 150 to 100 watt loads and less because you're limited to the 100 watt charging limit on the USB-C daisy chain. Okay, so here's another fun setup. I have three power stations stacked up because my Big Blue CP500 actually charges with three inputs. It has two USB-C charging inputs at 60 watts each, and then you can charge through uh, the 12 volt socket input. So I have, let's see, 49 watts coming out of this. 54 watts out of this and 57 all coming into the big blue powering my uh, Iceco Go 20. So if I wanted to get a really decent runtime on this Iceco, say it was really hot outside and knew the compressor was going to be running a lot by having all these power stations plugged into this one, I could get uh, quite a loadout. Now the only downside to the big blue is that the AC inverter is disabled when it's charging. So you can only use the 12 volt socket or 5521 connections. Uh, to put it out. So I'm guessing, I think the limit when I tested it was around 150 watts. So you could have 150 watt DC load coming out of this power station powering devices, and you could have three different power stations putting power in. So anyway, this was a cool way to show you guys how this could work. Just trying to give you guys some ideas on how you can connect multiple power stations together to get a longer runtime. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, we're gonna shift gears a little bit. We're going to a larger AC load. Now all the other loads have been smaller than 100 watts. What if you wanna run a 200 watt load and keep it going for a longer time? So you wanna have a power station that could at least accept 200 watts charging input. So I have my EB55 and my EB70, and they both come with these 200 watt wall adapters. So let's go ahead and turn on the AC inverter for the EB70, and I'm gonna dump 200 watts into this. 184 watts going out to the heater, and this should start charging any second. Okay, 185 should be up around 190. <clears throat> so now we're charging the EB55 with this wall adapter from the EB70. So we're taking the power from the EB70, dumping it into this, and then running the AC heater. Now what's really cool about both these power stations is they actually have pretty decent MPPT solar charge controllers. This can take around 155 to 160 watts. This one could take 155 to 165 watts as well depending on the voltage of your solar panel, as long as they're 12 volt solar panels. But what's really cool is the EB55 accepts dual charging. So I can charge it from this power station and have a solar panel plugged in. So you can basically get unlimited runtime on a heater like this, or even potentially a larger load, as long as you had both power stations hooked up and charging with solar panels and connected together. 
Okay, we're gonna step up the game a little bit. What if you wanna run a larger load than uh, you know, 200 watts, a 500 watt load? That's where a power station that charges super fast comes in handy. Now this is the EcoFlow River Pro. It can charge at 660 watts uh, when it's not in use. And for some crazy reason, whenever this is has a big load on it, it actually charges at almost uh, 800 watts input. For example, let's go ahead and uh, just dump power from this into this. So if we turn on this AC inverter here, um, it should start uh, charging up this power station. Okay, because you can see, uh, let's take a closer look at the screen going on here. Okay, so looking at the screen, 900 watts charging input, 447 watts going out. So pretty fast charging on this power station. Now what's super interesting is that this states that it can charge at 660 watts, but I guess whenever it's under a load, it charges even faster. Because I originally tried this with my EB70, and tried dumping power in, but the EB70 can only handle 800 watts and then it shuts off the inverter. So this pulls too much power on the charging uh, to pull from the EB70. So I am gonna reach out to EcoFlow because the Delta Max, the larger power station of this, actually allows you to set the input charging level to the level you want. And this one just has either fast or slow charging. So I'd love to see that updated on the firmware. So then I could set this to charge at like 500 or 600 watts and you could use the EB55 or the EB70 and not shut off the AC inverter from too much power. Now, if you notice that your current demand for power can't keep up with the smaller power stations, it might be worth upgrading to a larger power station. For example, this is the Blue Eddy AC200P. It has a 2000 watt inverter with six outlets, tons of DC output and USB output options, and it charges at up to 700 watts off solar panels. Now I have my solar panels coming in through the door here to charge this up. I have two different arrays outside, uh, one's 725 watts and one's 925 watts, and this is able to stay fully charged as long as the sun is shining. So I have this cable here going out to my computer to power that. I'm charging both of these power stations and it works really well. So if you're looking for a larger power station, I do have a website with a discount codes page that brings the price down on these power stations. Now this one on sale comes in at $1,500, sometimes cheaper, which is absolutely amazing. So if you're interested in a decent power station, you wanna check this one out. Now just for fun, I wanted to hook all these power stations together in one super long daisy chain, ending with the SeaTechie 500 over here on the right. Okay, so I have my Oops 1200 over here dumping power to my EcoFlow. My EcoFlow is then powering the AC adapter to charge the EB55. My EB55 is dumping 100 watts through the DC output to my EB70. Now, since my EB70 has 200 watt USB-C outputs, I have that coming into my Big Blue CP500. And then I have my DC output of my Big Blue going to the GoLabs R500. The GoLabs R500 is then dumping it into my Energizer. And then my Energizer is dumping out 60 watts through USB-C into my SeaTech E500. And I failed to mention that the UPS 1200 is actually charging off the AC adapter plugged into the inverter on my AC200P, which has 700 watts of solar coming into it. Now there's a ton of efficiency loss going through this whole system, but at least the power is coming from solar. Okay, so now my goal is to see if all these power stations will fill up to 100%. So let's give this an hour, come back in and check on it and see what things look like. Okay guys, well it's been about an hour and all the power stations are completely full, except for the UPES 1200 because that thing just takes so long to charge. So I thought this was a pretty interesting way to charge up all my power stations at once, especially off the solar panel input on a larger power station. Now, if you guys are interested in picking up your first power station or your second to maybe daisy chain it, I do have a new power station grading system. I'll include that in the video description so you check that out. Basically, I took all these power stations, I gave them a score of one to 10 based on their performance, their price, any issues and the features they have so you guys know which one will work best for you. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I love doing content like this. Having these tests like this was pretty fun. If you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, I invite you guys to check it out and subscribe so you guys can see all the future content that I have coming out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.